Hey, it's Meatball. And Mark. And this is the Rocker Morning Show on demand from 1077 RKR. This October, Tanger invites you to shop pink and save lives. Your donation of $10 or more to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation helps fuel innovative research that brings us closer to a cure. It also unlocks exclusive savings from brands like Coach, Crocs, Columbia Factory Store, and more to shop all month long. Join us as we mark 30 years of advancing research and empowering hope. Donate and access your exclusive savings today at Tanger.com. 1077 RKR, it is the Rocker Morning Show with Meatball. Hey, I'm Mark Frankhouse. Oh, Mark, this one's for you. Yeah. Hey, Tigers Whoa. going on to the league divisional round, man. That is awesome. Beat them cheating strows, and now we get to face the bums of Cleveland. The bums of Cleveland. I Cleveland's like trash. We're going to beat them. <laughs> Pretty exciting game yesterday. I, I actually yeah. slept through the first half of it. Um, but I woke up, and I saw it was one nothing, and I was like, ooh, that's okay. And then the next thing I knew, it was like 5-2, and I was like, oh, I'm not worried about it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, I was cooking something in the fridge, and I heard, it's gone. And I was like, oh, my gosh, they finally hit a home run. Yeah. Because they they're they not very, like, power hitters in Detroit. No. Good batters, but not really power hitters. So the one nothing lead I knew was not going to be enough, but putting in a rookie with four minutes of experience. <laughs> I mean, his first pitch, he beamed Alvarez. So it's like, oh, God. Yeah. And then he got a base hit right there. I'd have been like, let's go. Yeah. You've got a one-run lead. It's a seventh inning. Like, listen, well, you had your shot. You just blew it. Yeah. Like, n shake it off. Clear the cobwebs. Get it going. Instead, they waited until they had baser, like two base runners in <laughs> scoring position. And they gave up the lead. And yeah. they're like, okay, now we'll take you out. I'm like, yeah. oh, good timing. <laughs> Moron! Did you say like there were some people in the comments that were like Randy Quaid oh from God, uh, Major yeah. League Two, <laughs> which is like they're losers. They're, they're oh, it, was, it was fun while it lasted. It's over. <laughs> and I'm like, just shut up and watch the game. Yeah. And you know what happened? And I told you this earlier. What happened? Boom. They went out there and smacked one of the best bullpens, silly. Yep. One of the best bullpens and, in the league. And they are the youngest team in the league, too. There isn't yeah. a single player in that dugout over 28. Right. It was just a phenomenal showing. And I uh, <laughs> I was driving yesterday, and my I get I see my phone start to blowing up, and I stopped at a red light, looked down, and I see, F, yeah, oh, my God. I was like, what happened? <laughs> and this was right before they had the uh, – the three run triple, oh, the run three run eight, double, yeah. 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 And it was after that, it was like, yeah, we're going. So, yep. um, just a just a heads up, guys. I might be taking a day off next week <laughs> because I'm pretty sure my dad and my brothers and I are going to go to like Game Four or something. Yeah, Game One Saturday in um, Cleveland. Game Two, I believe, is Sunday in Cleveland. Then a day off, and then they they come back uh, to Detroit. So next Thursday, it's going to be Game Four. Uh, in Detroit, time TBD. So yeah, we don't know. I, it seems like the AL games have been a little earlier in the playoffs. So I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Uh, fun stats from that game: the entire twenty-six uh, man roster. Yeah, for uh, the Tigers cost eighteen point eight million dollars. Josh Hader for the Astros <laughs> cost nineteen million dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's a. Uh, that's a lot of money you just wasted there. Houston. Yeah, that's that's great. I love um, hearing that. And uh, just scrolling through Twitter on this stuff, apparently Detroit is now America's baseball team since they beat the Astros. Like, they are the villain of the league. Yeah. Everybody wants to beat the Astros, so that was a good time. Uh, yeah, so uh, Cleveland, not far to travel if you want to go to the game, man. It's not, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, what, three hours, four hours? Yeah, about three and a half hours, I'd yeah. say. But you, Two then, from Detroit. Yeah, but you know what that means. You got to go to Ohio. Yeah, and you got to go to Cleveland on top of that. Like, ugh. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait for them to come back to Detroit. Yeah. 1077 RKR, The Rocker Morning Show with Mark Frankhouse. And me, Paul. I recently discovered another made-for-TV movie about the Detroit Tigers. Okay. 
there's been some amazing baseball films throughout history. You know, you think of like a league of their own major league franchise rookie of the year. Uh, the art of doing a movie about baseball is pretty much embedded in the American culture. Right. I mean, Field of Dreams, one of the best, right? F that movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, rest in peace, James O. Jones, the only good part of the, about that movie. But it's American pastime. I mean, th- th- it's funny how many baseball films have slid under the radar yeah. regarding popularity and exposure, primarily because there have been a few movies based around the Detroit Tigers, which until recently weren't very well known. One of the movies was a made for TV movie in 1983. It's called Tiger Town, which I talked about before. I'm pretty sure this whole movie is available on YouTube. It starred the man who's best known for his role in Jaws, uh, Roy Scheider. Okay. So he is a Detroit Tiger in the film. It was also Disney's first made for TV movie as well. It's kind of interesting. Hmm. But another lesser known Tigers movie was about the former Detroit Tiger, Roy LaFleur. It's called One in a Million. Have you ever heard of this? I have not. So the film kind of tells the story of Ron LaFleur's life. He's, you know, a troubled Detroit youth. He rose from, you know, Michigan's prisons to star in the MLB with the Tigers. Um, And it's based on his autobiography called Breakout from Prison to Big Leagues. And it's pretty cool because if you want to watch the trailer, it's up here on the Rocker app. We actually have some really cool guest appearances uh, former Detroit manager Billy Martin played himself. Former Tigers Norm Cash, Bill Freehan, Al Kaline, and Jim Northrup also appeared as themselves in this film. Okay, that's pretty cool. Here's what didn't click with me, though, <laughs> off the bat when I looked at all this. Off I looked the bat. at. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I I was right. I was getting the notes down. I wrote this article on the Rocker app, and I I saw who played. LaFleur, and I didn't realize it until this morning. LeVar Burton oh, plays yeah. LaFleur from Roots and Reading Rainbow and Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, man. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this is huge. I can't believe I never heard of this. This trailer is awesome, by the way. I'm watching it right now. You can uh, you can hit me up right now, 978-1077. I, well, I want to know from you is if you've either seen this or Tiger Town before, also, I'm curious. Let me know what other Detroit Tiger story you think would be another great made-for-TV movie. Yeah, I, uh, somehow I don't think the Mario and Pemba Rod Allen fight uh, will make the cut. For Are you this kidding one. me? That would be badass. We can get Vin Diesel, and Wesley Snipes, and just <laughs> blow it out of proportion. It's time to turn up your dials and tune out the traffic because we're playing the Daily Five. On the Rocker Morning Show, testing the mental magnitude of your favorite morning monkeys on the radio. And now, your hosts for the Daily Five, Meatball and Mark Frank Howes. It is the Daily Five where Mark and I ask each other questions. The other one answers today. Mark is asking the questions. I am answering. And I got some help on the line today from Zach. Good morning, Zach. How are you? Good morning. Doing well. Awesome, man. You got to help Meatball get three out of five questions correct. If you do, he'll get his first point for the week. If not, we'll make it four nothing. Food is question number one. All right. I'm good with that. M&M's fruit chews would eventually become what popular candy? Starburst, Skittles, or High Chew? They were originally called M&M's fruit chews. Ooh. But they became what candy? Starburst, Skittles, or Haichu? Are Skittles in the same company, Zach, as M&M's? Um, I'm not sure. I'm, what we're, I'm thinking Starburst. Starburst. Fruit Chews makes sense. But see, I think Starburst is in a different company because M&M Mars is, is the company, obviously, with M&M's. M&M's and Skittles are in the same company. They are in the same company? Ooh. What was the last one? Hi what? Hi Chew. Hi Chew. Oh God, I hated those things. I don't know. Hi Chew kind of stands out to me, Zach. Okay. <laughs> you don't sound so convinced. <laughs> we gotta get an answer. Let me let me hear your thoughts before I put in a final answer here. Oh, your guess is as good as mine. All right, we're gonna go with Hi Chew. Final answer. Then. Hi Chew. Final answer. Skills. It was Starburst. Oh. Strangely oh. enough, didn't even matter that they're a part of the same company. Okay, weird. Strangely enough. 
Just Eminem fruit shoes. That just doesn't sound right. Entertainment. Did you ever watch the Drew Carey show? Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you might know this. Yep. Uh, Drew Carey show featured an episode that had Slash, Dusty Hill of ZZ Top, Dave Mustaine, Johnny Lang, Joey Ramone, Joe Walsh, Cheap Trick, guitarist Rick Nielsen. It was crazy. Basically, in the episode, they auditioned for Drew's band. Right. Which has a gig at the Ramada Inn. Who ends up getting that job as their guitarist? Was it Joe Walsh, Johnny Lang, or Slash? Oh, that would be a difficult one. I'm not sure. I didn't watch that show very often. <sighs> I want to say Joe Walsh got the gig. I don't think it was Slash. I think it's between Johnny Lang and Joe Walsh. I want to say Joe Walsh got the nod to be in the band, Zach. Oh, uh, that sounds good to me. All right. I'm going to just I'm going to go with uh Joe Walsh, final answer. Slash was not their guitarist and they hired Johnny Lang oh, dang it. to cut the grass. It uh, was Joe Walsh. Oh, it was Joe Walsh. Yes. Dang it. Oh, God, dang yeah. It. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny Lang cut the grass. That's great. <laughs> he said we hired you to yeah. cut the grass. That's right. <laughs> I forgot about that. It's been so long since I've seen that show. All right. Nice job, Meatball. Sports. Question number 3. What was the first baseball stadium built for Major League play? Was it Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, Union Club Grounds in Cincinnati, or Fenway in Boston? I believe Fenway is the oldest currently standing field, but I don't believe it was the first built for MLB. All right, so then we've got Forbes Field in Pittsburgh or Union Club Grounds in Cincinnati. We are ruling out Fenway. I, I think it's Fenway. You think it's Fenway? Yeah, I watch baseball. I think that sounds about right. Okay. I'll go with Zach then. I'll uh, I'll stick with Fenway. Final answer. You go Fenway. Final answer. Forbes Field in Pittsburgh was the earliest oh, baseball stadium. Man. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I know like Fenway is, is I'm pretty sure it's the oldest standing yes. one. But yeah, I wasn't sure if it was the first one built. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, all right. Got to run the table here. History. Much before Firefest, a concert promoter once sold a thousand tickets to a concert in Hawaii that never actually took place. Have you heard about this before? I, it sounds familiar. Who was it for? Was it for the Spice Girls, Elvis, or Bruce Springsteen? Well, I thought it sounded familiar. I would familiar. probably guess Bruce Springsteen. I haven't heard of this, though. <laughs> totally scammed him on Hawaii, you know? Yeah, no joke. Similar idea, though. Fly him to an, to an island and then... Spice Girls? Oh, I'm just guessing. What <laughs> He's making be. a case for all of them. <laughs> making a case for all of them. Yeah. Well, we've eliminated yeah. zero of them now, Zach. <laughs> yeah. uh, boy. I don't know. If you're going to draw people to Hawaii, like to fly into Hawaii, I feel like it's going to be bigger than the Spice Girls. I feel like it's going to be Springsteen yeah. or Elvis. Probably, probably Bruce Springsteen. Let's go with the boss. Final answer. Boss, final answer. You guys apparently don't want to spice up your life. It was the Spice it Girls? It was the Spice oh, Girls. Wow, really? Yes. Oh, So he boy. totally uh, totally scammed him off the Spice Girls. Couldn't get it. Oh, so again, God. we go for nothing. Potentially sweep tomorrow. Hasn't happened all year. So I'm expecting Meatball to give me some tough ones tomorrow. Uh, Zach, however, you are the winner because you get a pair of tickets to the Donut and Beer Festival going down in a few weeks here, man. Awesome. Thank you. Heck yeah. Congratulations, brother. Sorry we couldn't get Meatball the W today. Yeah, we got the got the L. We got the law. Yeah, I'm used to it by now. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> 1077 RKR. The Rock and Morning Show with Meatball. And Mark Frankhouse. Um, headway being made for the homeless population in Kalamazoo, or at least some of it, uh, this week. The county, Kalamazoo County, along with the city of Kalamazoo and Portage, have purchased the old Holiday Inn Express and Suites on Cork Street. And they're going to turn it into a family homeless shelter. Hmm. Uh, at least that's the plan as of right now. Um they confirmed this at a uh, commission meeting earlier this week. All told, they're going to spend about $5.2 million to purchase the building and the property and do some renovations to it, which, as I'm to understand, is going to include some foundational work. Um, but uh, they think they can get it done. And then uh, the county says this will be for homeless families uh, specifically. 
and that there should be about 60 different units in the building when they're done. So they're hoping to have this finished and ready to go mid-2025. Uh, it's good. Yeah. About time. I mean, you know, you drive up and down uh, downtown, and I mean, it just it, it kind of breaks your heart a little bit to see some of those people. And I, It's, I, it's freaking embarrassing. There's, I, I understand that there is a, a population of the homeless that are like, you know what? I am homeless. Like, I just, there, there are people who actually prefer to be homeless, which is, it's a weird concept for some people to grasp. But then there are those that are that are there not by choice, and I'm sure they would much rather have a, a better way of life, even just a little, you know, a, a little bit of help to kind of get them back on their feet. Because, I mean, you know, this is going to be a place for, for struggling families who have, you know, you're going to get a roof over your head, a uh, place to clean up, you know, a place to sleep, even eat, uh, clean their clothes. Like, it sounds like, you know, simple and basic stuff for most of us, but sometimes, like, that's... All it takes, really, to kind of, to, you know, brighten your day a little bit, you know? Just anything, because nobody should be sleeping outside. That's ridiculous. Yeah. With all the abandoned and empty buildings we have, yeah. like, there's zero reason for it. Well, and this is this is an example of that. An empty yeah. building that basically is built to be for something like this. Yeah. It's a perfect opportunity. Yeah, no, nobody should be outside. And the fact that it's just been worsening is embarrassing, because we have money. The yeah. city has money. And... We're just basically told what to do with it. And the the problem, the houseless problem just keeps growing and growing. And it's like, you know, we talk about wanting to bring some life downtown. Yeah, um, yeah. That's hard know, to do right now. You do it by helping people who are struggling because everybody's situation is different. You yeah. know, it's it's very easy for people to be judgmental and go, oh, go and get a job, oh, blah, blah, blah. And right, that's but- just being cynical and you know, ignorant. I, I love explaining to people like, you know, oh, well, if they should just go get a job, right. That's fine and dandy. But in order to get a job, you have to have an address. You have to have a way to get to and from work. You need to have, you know, social security number and all this stuff anymore to have a job, even just, you know, working for like a McDonald's or something just to work at a drive through. Like you have to be in, in a presentable fashion and you have to have some kind of stability in your life to be able to accept any job anymore. So oh, it's tough for them. And it's, it's a, Difference between being cynical and being reasonable. That's like yeah, I said, exactly. everybody's situation is different. Yeah. Um but, but something we, like this, I feel like is 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 a good foot in the door for yeah. somebody that just they just need that that extra moment where they can just take a breath, reset themselves, and be like, okay, I have some stability. Let's go do this. You know? Yes. Uh it's a good it's stepping in, in the right direction. I want to see more of this. And um, yeah, just help these people out, man, because it's yeah, it's not good, man. Yeah. So if you want to read, I mean, if you want to read more on this, uh, there's some links to um, kind of what they propose they're going to do with it, how they're going to spend the money and things of that nature. We've got those links with the story, WRKR.com and on the 107.7 RKR app. You know, this being a Holiday in you know, Suites uh, building, I'm curious if, they, if, if you think they'll still offer the Continental Breakfast. I have had the <clears throat> Continental Breakfast. It won't cost them much to keep this running. <laughs> Just a few eggs, some sausage, and mediocre coffee. Come on. (laughs) Give a little. 1077 RKR. It's a rock and morning show with Mark Frankhouse. And Meatball. Okay, I really don't want to talk about this, Meatball. Okay. But it does need to be discussed. Since you originally wrote about this, maybe you can give me and our audience a little insight up here on the 1077 RKR app. We look at the possibility of it snowing here in Kalamazoo this month. It's very possible. Now, mm-hmm. for context, I, I wouldn't normally bring this up because I like to enjoy fall while it's here. <laughs> right. But last year, it snowed on Halloween mm-hmm. and was lukewarm and gray on Christmas. Yep, that is correct. Which, in my opinion, should be the exact opposite of how things go. Um, it now, should I, be chilly and not gray on right. Halloween. Like, you shouldn't have to cover your Halloween costume with a puffy coat. Exactly. Well, especially (laughs) because it's raining so much, you know? Right, right, right. But I know you're not a meteorologist, but you wrote about La Nina being in effect. Do you think La Nina will have any effect on us having a normal holiday season as far as weather is concerned? In, In terms of what Michigan considers normal, I think it's going to be more normal than it has been, at least since I moved here. Yeah. Because I keep getting told I have not been here through a typical winter yet for Michigan. Like, because yeah. El Nino has kind of been in place for a few years now and stuff. But my understanding is in a typical year, like it starts to get cooler like it is now. 
Uh, the trees all start to turn about early mid-November or October, which is exactly what's happening right now. Yep. And then by the time you get to the end of October, there's a there's a chill in the air. Um, you've probably had a couple days of frost, maybe a little bit of snow on the ground. Uh, that like you know it's that little bit of snow that like you get it and then it disappears in like a couple hours. Exactly. It's it's more possible now with La Nina than it was before because the the weather system pushes the 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 air different basically. So right. we'll be getting more cold air out of Canada, but we're still going to get some of the moisture uh, that comes with it. So I think it's possible. I'm hoping so because I would like it to see our first snow be around Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm cool significant with that. snow, significant S- snow. Yeah, significant yeah. snow because yeah. I I don't mind like you know an inch or so, like may, or maybe even half an inch yeah. of snow around Thanksgiving time because that kind of gets you in the mood. Anyways, a lot of people as soon as Halloween's done, they go right into Christmas. So hit us up nine seven eight one zero seven seven. Are you one of those people like as soon as Halloween's done, you're full on Christmas, or do you really grasp autumn? Because yeah. I feel like with the weather. You don't have time to grasp autumn because September's over. It's October. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I feel like fall should be celebrated. I just, I have never experienced, even even in the two years I've been here, I've experienced more seasons than I ever have in my entire life. Because <laughs> I'm just used to sweltering hot in the summer where you walk on the grass and it crumbles beneath your feet. Right. <laughs> To like maybe two weeks in the spring and fall where it kind of rains a little bit and things look green for a little bit. And then you immediately get to the winter and it doesn't really snow down there. We get rain and ice mostly. So then everything just turns gray and brown and cracks under your feet. So really everything just looks sad and depressing back home. I just want, I just want some real, I want a real winter this year mm. for you and for me. I feel like if we never get a dusting on Thanksgiving and a white Christmas, then we just wasted the entire year getting to the holidays. And we, <laughs> we should, at that point, just throw the calendar in the garbage. We jump right to March. Let's just get this over with. Mm. We're, we're done. 1077 RKR, it is the Rock and Morning Show with me, Paul. And Mark Frankhouse. And, of course, it's Thursday, which means we've got Nick from Kalamazoo Athletic Wellness in the studio. Hello. What's up, man? Uh, the sky. Yes, indeed. <laughs> we're back for the Rocker Big Picks. Of the week with our buddy Nick from Kalamazoo Athletic Wellness, as we mentioned. And uh, good to be having you in here. Uh, Meatball, we got to get a quick recap from last week. Yeah, all right. Let's do this. All right, so quick recap. Nick, boy, Mm. picking the Chiefs, Lions, and Alabama, only missing the Western game last week. Yeah. You made a lot of headway. Uh, I'm still in the lead with nine correct, but uh, you're on my heels with eight. Mark, you're still hanging around with six there. I'm just impressed with Nick's week, man. Those were good. It was a good one. And I almost nailed that Lions score, too. It was so close. It was so close. I was like, uh. (laughs) (laughs) Moving on to this week, though. Let's get into them. Uh, Mark, your game first. We haven't done MSU yet, so we're going to do MSU versus number six Oregon in Oregon. So we're not picking who's going to win because (laughs) we know. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the uh, point spread. 23 and a half point favorite the Ducks are. So the picks will be for the point spread. Um, I'm saying Ducks are going to cover this spread, man. I think they're going to dominate MSU 48-10. Oof. Oof. What do you uh, think, Nick? Well, I, I think uh, MSU showed promise at the beginning of the season and then has fallen apart the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, I think they might get their stuff back together just a little bit. So I think they're going to cover the spread, okay. but it's still going to be like 35-24. Okay, that's not bad. It's giving them a lot of points. Yeah, I I think they're going to miss the cover. I think um, I think MSU uh, still loses. Oregon forty five, Michigan State twenty seven. Guys are giving them so it's many really points. Tight. I know, I know. Uh, my game this week: Western Michigan at Ball State. Both three and one, or I'm sorry, one and three. Uh, Western wants to uh, finish this road trip on a high note. Ball State really hasn't played any big names yet, except for getting steamrolled by Miami. Uh, they barely lost to uh, Central a couple weeks ago. I think uh, Western's strength of schedule thus far kind of gives them the edge there. I am picking Western on this one, 31-21. Yeah, I agree. I think Western's going to take this uh, road W, much needed as well. A little bit closer score, though. I'm thinking 34-28 Broncos. All right, Nick, what are you thinking? Uh, Mac, ga- Mac games are always tough games. Uh, Ball State always brings it. Um, but I do have to believe in my boys. We're going to go <laughs> WMU. 
Uh, and we're going to say 31-25. Okay. okay, all right. Keep it a little close. Yeah. Nick, you're a Game of the Week Buffalo in Houston, right? That is correct. Uh, I think both teams are off to a good start, 3-1, and one, looking like AFC playoff ga- uh, teams. Stefan Diggs gets to play against his old team in his new home, mm-hmm. which I think is interesting. Yeah. Um, I think he's going to ball out, but... I think the Bills will come away with a W, uh, 31-27. Yeah. Um, Josh Allen, just too big of a monster. He's got so many weapons there. I see Bills doing what they have to do to get the win, 35-21. Yeah, this is a tight one. I uh, Another coin toss of a game for me, 35-27 Bills, I think, for me on this one. Smart. All right, finally, the Kalamazoo Athletic Wellness Big Pick of the Week. Um, this is more of a big guess than a pick. Can the Jacksonville Jaguars finally get a win? Uh, they are at home against the Indianapolis Colts, who just lost Anthony Richardson. He's injured. He may be back. He's day-to-day, I think, at this point. Yeah. Uh, but the Colts do have Flacco in their back pocket, um, so we'll see how they do there. Uh, three of the last four losses, which would be all four games this year so far, have been by five points or less for mm. the Jags. Um, and and some are even speculating that the refs kind of handed last week's win to the Texans with a few questionable calls there. Um, the line is near 50-50 on this one in analytics. Uh, Mark, who are you picking? Unfortunately, as much as I need their QB to do something for me for fantasy, much like that league, I think the Jags struggles will continue and go 0-5, like me, <laughs> as... <laughs> Colts are going to pull away in a lower scoring game. I think it'll be like 24-13 Colts. All right, Nick, what do you think? Uh, I think Indy is, like you mentioned, a little bit banged up. Um, We have yet to see what's going to happen there. Um, The last meeting, though, the Jags uh, destroyed the Colts 37-20, to which was just last year. Yeah. Uh, So I think this is the chance for the Jags to come away with one of their three wins for this season. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to go with Jags 20-17. to to 20-17. All right. Well, a home game after three of their first four on the road. Uh, We actually just talked to Tony Khan this week who not only owns AEW Wrestling, he's also in the front office for the Jaguars, and I think he's going to help make this game dynamite at home. See what I did there, Mark? Very nice. Um, I think the Jags do get their first win, but again, it's going to be another close one. Come down to a shootout. I think it's going to be Jags 38, Colts 35. Hit us up on the 1077 RKR app. Let us know what your picks are, and make sure to visit Kalamazoo Athletic Wellness on West Nidge. Nick, tell our audience some of the great services you got going on there right now. Well, right now we are uh, offering free 10-minute demos in our recovery room, which oh. is a nice little side room in our lobby with a big cushy couch, and you can put on these Normatec compression pants. Which I think we're going to try out at some point. Yes. You are, yeah. yeah. It's going to be very entertaining. <laughs> awesome. Well, get into that, and we're also going to hook you up something right now. Detroit Lions scratch-off tickets, Rawr. 978 1077. Call number seven. You're going to win $20 in Detroit Lions scratch off tickets. Get those calls in. Good luck and uh, good luck with the scores this week, gentlemen. Woot, woot. Yeah, the Lions can't win this week because they're on a bye, but maybe you could win for the Lions with those scratch oh, tickets. Good call. Yeah. 1077 RKR. It is the Rocker Morning Show with Meatball and Mark Frankhouse. Hypothetical scenario. Okay. You go to vote early in an election, cast your vote legally. And then before election day, because sometimes early voting can be as early as like a month or two, Mm -hmm. you know, before actual election day. Before election day, you die. Now, of course, the most important question in this scenario is, and it's on everyone's mind, does your vote still count? I think it should. Okay. Any reasoning behind that? Like, well, you've, you know, you're legal to vote. You're, you know... You have every reason to voice and uh, express who you want to be in in charge. For the future. Yeah, just because you kicked the bucket (laughs) doesn't mean that you should. Okay, well, they're irrelevant now. It's like, well, gee, thanks for blanking my existence. Right, right. Um, Well, it turns out there's no federal law on the books that can determine this. Hmm. Um, So despite this being a federal election this year, uh, there's no law on the books that specifically says on the federal level whether your vote counts or not in this scenario if you die uh, before it can be counted. Now, of course, when most of these federal voting laws were written, uh, there was no online registration or voting in, in most mail-in uh, and, and early voting was like military and overseas citizens anyway. So clearly outdated yeah. on that level of things, right? 
but it is still a concern and it has kind of grown up. So the states took it upon themselves to make these decisions themselves. Kind of. Um, <laughs> some of them are a little more direct with their answer than others. So let's just start with Michigan. In Michigan, it is a no-go. If you vote early, vote online, early, mail-in, whatever, and then you die before Election Day, your vote is not counted. Now, occasionally, some will slip through the system, uh, but Michigan keeps pretty good records on whether its citizens are alive or dead. And uh, most of your voting info is kind of tied to the rest of your state info. So huh. they're going to know to look for it if you turn up dead before Election Day. But the law specifically is, in Michigan, your vote does not officially count if you die before Election Day. But we do have listeners in some other states on this station, specifically our neighbors to the south in Ohio and Indiana. You ready for their laws? Yeah. They're different as well. In Ohio, if you vote, then die, your vote still counts. Okay. Uh, their law says if you vote legally before the election, your vote will still count, though some people can appeal. But due to the state's privacy laws, it's almost impossible to win those appeals. So there's, there's really no point, And they just count the votes. Not as much early voting, I think, in Ohio as Michigan, but still, um, it's it's something out there. So if you vote in Ohio and you died, votes still can count there. Uh, they have to confirm that the person is dead, obviously, and then, you know, sometimes it has to be pointed out. Indiana, does your vote count? Officially, it's not supposed to. That's what's on the book. It shouldn't, but it might. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you die, they have to confirm that you died and that you did vote early. However, if nobody catches it and the vote gets counted, they don't really see it as a huge deal. Um, it's just, it's a little easier to find and remove ballots of deceased voters. But if they do slip through, they're just like, eh, it is what it is. That's fine. Hmm. Um, so Ohio. You can cast your ballot. You're good. Indiana, you just want to, I don't know, try to hang on until November. And in Michigan, definitely hang on until November. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Yeah. I mean, really all around, just hang on. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Yeah. I mean, and hang on and long enough to see your vote count. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, don't just vote and be like, all right, I'm leaving this up to, to the universe and then just <laughs> bye. <laughs> Jesus, you know? take the wheel. It's like, but well, hold on. <laughs> Wait, hold on. There were no cars when Jesus around. He didn't know how to drive. So asking him to take the wheel is probably not the best idea. Oh, man. It is kind of crazy to look through some of these state laws, though, and see, like, how different they are. Literally everything from a hard-nosed no to just, eh, whatever, if we miss it, no big deal. It's... <laughs> It's like the dude from the Big Lebowski making laws. He's ah. like, yeah, man, whatever. Just 1077 RKR. It is the Rock and Morning Show with Meatball. And Mark Frankhouse. Well, um, some scary stuff for uh, the month of October. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Um, normally, you know, in the front yards, we got 12-foot skeletons and ghouls and other frightening sights and all that whatnot, it's not going to be the scariest thing this holiday season. There is a global chocolate shortage. Oh, no. A global chocolate shortage. <laughs> that is nothing to laugh at. No, Mr. Thunder Guy, that's not cool. Uh, farmers in West Africa, where two-thirds of the world's cocoa supply comes from, currently under threat from a virus spreading mealybug while the global climate change is wreaking havoc on sugarcane as well. Chief Meteorologist and Everstream Analytics John Davis explains here, quote, this has been a very tough year for global sugar. If you look at the top 10 producing countries this year, six of them have had extreme weather, and the ramification of that is higher prices for anything that you use sugar for, including candy. And that does include chocolate as well. Add to that the fact that uh, we're having the uh, the dock workers strike there on the East Coast mm -hmm. uh, of the U.S. There might just be less chocolate this year for Halloween, Mark. That is uh, not a thing you want to face 
Yeah. In reality. That you is, know, I like what is, is chocolate your candy go to like for Halloween? Is that what you kind of trend toward? I would, yeah, I kind of stick with because I'm like tried and true. Like I'm all about Twix, Snickers, and Butterfingers. Right, 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 right. And I got I have an affinity for almond joys too. Oh, fair enough. Never right. used to like those as kids, but I freaking love them now. Yeah, right, right. Well, uh, the good thing for me is um, aside from the, the sugar aspect of this, I'm not really much of a chocolate person. Gotcha. Uh, I go for like the gummy bears, the gummy worms, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll be okay. Um, <laughs> I might just have to rob a few more kids this year of their candy as they're walking up and down Lord. the street. Evil, evil human being. I don't actually rob the kids. I <laughs> just, I'm teaching them a life lesson and charging them a candy tax to walk within 50 feet of my front door. You are a ruthless individual. Although, I don't know if you dress up like Swiper from Dora the Explorer, then at least you've got something, you know, at least you could say I was in character. Right. And then they'll come up to me like, Swiper. And I'm like, hey, kid. All right, Candy, pack it. Give, give it up. Here. Here we go. This is what we do now. And if they don't know the term Swiper, no swiping, they deserve to lose. <laughs> Shop Macy's VIP sale going on now. Use your coupon or Macy's card and take an extra 30% off the latest fall trends from designers that rarely go on sale. And save 15% off skincare, makeup, fragrances, and more. Plus, shop fall specials for even more great deals on top brands at Macy's. Savings off regular and already reduced prices. Exclusions apply.